Uh, welcome to this month's Let's Talk Integrity and Ethics. And as we get started, um, actually we'll just start by introducing ourselves. So I'm Cindy Gillespie, I'm the Secretary of DHS. Um, I'm Janet Mann, I'm the Director of Medical Services. I'm Jim Brayer with the Office of Chief Counsel. Mary Catherine Williams, Chief Procurement Officer. Okay, great. So today we're going to talk, um, holidays are upon us, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about um, Thanksgiving, but mostly Christmas, and gifts. We did this a year ago, and we actually heard from a lot of you that it was extremely helpful to have a talk about what to do at Christmas when you get gifts, you're offered things, you're invited to things, etc. So um, we thought we would just talk about it again. Let's start with what is the law here in the state when it comes to accepting <coughs> gifts? Others. To paraphrase the statute that defines a gift, it's anything of value that can be a service or an advance that you don't pay an equal or greater amount for. So a gift would be anything you can monetize or put value to. That's the broad general definition. Then there is about a page and a half of exceptions in that, a few of which are important to today's topic. Um, if you're at a conference, um, the, the food that's prepared for you there, or, or an event that is attended to a conference, that's exempted. Anything of less than a hundred dollar value is exempted and not considered a gift. Um, and there's actually a provision that says if you pay the difference and make, if you got something worth two hundred dollars and gave a hundred dollars to the get the giver, that would bring it down below the definition. But I think we're going to talk about why that probably isn't a good idea. Exactly. There's the actual law, and then there is the practice. Right. And one more thing also, as public servants, which we all are, we're not public officials, but we're all public servants because we're not elected, uh, you're prohibited from accepting something that was given to you for the performance of your duties. So probably what you want to think of is if someone's giving you a gift, are they giving it to you because of your position with DHS? If the answer to that is yes, then probably you want to think that that's not a problem. Even if it is under the Even if it's, dollars. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. So the hundred dollars is the limit or the floor or the ceiling? One hundred dollars is the ceiling. Anything of a hundred dollars or less is not considered a gift. It's exempted in the statute. <clears throat> it's exempted in the statute. But if you're an employee That's that's correct. If yes. you're getting it in your job, let's make sure we're really clear. Yes. Right. And this is not straightforward stuff. That's why you need to call me when you have these questions, because we, as we sit here and discuss the definitions, even they start to look somewhat contradictory. Okay. All right. So now that we have been somewhat confusing, <laughs> I think, let's get it cleared up. Um, let's go straight to just the easy one. Vendor, all right, you're working. You work with somebody regularly and that vendor sends you a nice little arrangement of cookies mm -hmm. or something edible like that. Talk about that for a few minutes, all right? Mary Catherine. All right, if they ask you ahead of time, I would say to your vendor, no thank you, but we, we appreciate the thought, but no thank you and Merry Christmas and God bless you, anything else you want to say. Um, if they do not ask you ahead of time, then uh, document what you have gotten and share with everyone on your team. And also, if it is a vendor and you are close to bidding, if you are close to a new procurement, if you are close to a blackout date, if you are close to anything where a decision is going to be made, Take that into account as well in your actions. Just be really super careful about not just the way things look, but what the intention is behind the gift. And the intention could be Merry Christmas, mm -hmm. but the intention could also be I want to make sure that um, you remember me fondly because we have a new procurement coming up in two months. So think about these things, document what you do, share with everyone. And if you get an opportunity to decline, I would simply decline. You know, one of the things we do, um, one of the things I do and we do in our office is, um, you know, and it's very sweet of people to send things, mm -hmm. right? But when they come, what we try to do a lot of times 
is unless it's immediately perishable, we contribute it. We give it to a charity, we give it to somewhere else. And then we just write a, um, I write a little thank you note and thank them very much for having given this gift and that we really appreciate it and we have donated it to X um, so that it could be enjoyed for this Christmas. And, you know, it, it is a way to, as you said, create, acknowledge what they're doing, but create the documentation and make sure it's very clear that it, it did not wind up being something that, you know, I took home and used for myself. And I think gift cards are a really good example of what the Secretary is talking about right now. Um, if you get gift cards, then um, please get in touch with Jim Brader on this. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, again, it's the point Jim made. We are in public service, and while it's very nice for people to, do, to say thank you around the holidays, we also have to be very, very careful because we are in public service. Um, okay, Christmas, vendor invites you to lunch. Um, what do you do with that? I'll take this one. Um, not just at Christmas time, but also during the year with outside meetings or lunch meetings. Um, I always practice is to pay for my own lunch. The um, appearance of having lunch with a vendor can be so misconstrued in so many ways that I also try very hard to not do it and I discourage my staff from doing it. If they need to meet with us, we always welcome them in the, in the building to meet with us as an ongoing business practice. Um, if it does occur, um, I, I would encourage, always pay for your own lunch, but that is one receipt that I would encourage always keeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we work with a lot of vendors and contractors every day. They are, um, they are a key part of our operations and what goes on um, and in many ways they become like colleagues mm -hmm. and just like with your other colleagues there may be people that you do want to go to lunch with to celebrate the holidays right just say Merry Christmas to each other it's fine if you do it but just make sure that you pay your own way just so that there would never be an issue about it that gets raised it's very simple they'll pay theirs you pay yours so and I would just advise you one more time, if you're close to a procurement or if you're within a procurement, that needs to be taken into consideration and probably decline. Um, okay, so let's say it goes to a different level and someone gives you tickets to something. And let's say it's a vendor who decides to give you, surprises you with tickets to a play, tickets to a ball game, tickets to a concert, tickets to an event of some sort. I, th I think you have to return them and you have to acknowledge and send a thank you note and just um, state as a public servant, we cannot accept these while we appreciate the thought. It's not um, in the normal course of business. And I would um, send that acknowledgement and I would also consult with Jim to make sure that Jim knew about it. So. And I think you might also have the option if it's an event you wanted to attend, mm -hmm. you could send payment for those tickets okay. and leave a good trail of that and that way if there's ever a question, you pay for it mm -hmm. and it's not a gift and it wasn't, and you paid for it, therefore it wasn't undue influence for you to make a decision in favor of that vendor. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one option, I mm -hmm. that, that truly is. There is, and that's why it's important to talk to Jim, all right? So there is the... It's tickets to an event, and they're widely available. And then there's, well, it's been sold out for forever. It's the, um, you know, it's the Super Bowl, and you're being given tickets to sit in someone's suite. And face value of those tickets to sit in a suite might be one thing. None of us know anybody who's ever going to offer us any of that, but just to <laughs> give the extreme example. Um, but that's when you might want to make sure you call and consult with Jim because that has a whole different appearance when you accept and pay for something like that that is not available to others. And he will guide you through that and guide you through what you can do and cannot do and how to document that. And important also is we could comply with the law a lot of times when you still ought to say no. Mm -hmm. The appearance is, is a big part of this. And uh, as I've said before, in this room, before these cameras, the taxpayers don't have a lot of sense of humor about our conduct 
because their, our salaries are paid by their tax dollars what they pay. So the appearance is very important here. The Super Bowl is a good example uh, that you could comply with the law, but that would really look bad. And that's, you know, um, and again, we say this to y'all almost every time we meet, so much of our um, policies and the state laws, et cetera, are meant, yeah, they, you can be in technical compliance, but always think about how it's going to look if it winds up on the front page of the newspaper, right? And it's somewhere in a story because something has come up and someone goes to look into it and they say, and this DHS worker was doing X. And then we, that's what we mean by appearance. I mean, people assume and you are explaining. And when you're explaining, you're never in a good place. It's just best not to let it happen. And I do think there is something to be said about intention. Um, when I first got out of law school, I clerked for a couple of different judges, and we would run across law firms that, um, of course, did Christmas giving, which was very nice. My judge would always say no, but it was very nice. Um, but there was also the lawyers who would bring coffee cake every morning or would, um, you know, come over and ask out the, the case coordinator's lunch. And when I was in the private practice for a very short period of time, I found out that um, there was giving at the top levels of things to try to maybe make friends with the judge, but there was also quite a bit of giving to clerks and staff in the hopes that there was a friendly relationship there that could be taken advantage of in some ways. You know, something of a shortcut. So while thinking about the law and while thinking about ethics, I also think it's important to think about intention. What is the intention of this person? And how does that reflect on DHS and the mission we're trying to accomplish? Very well said. Um, you know, we, we try very hard to, uh, around Christmas, um, invite our vendors and others, if they want to contribute, to do so. Um, around things like the foster children, the DYS youth, we have a lot of opportunities for giving that we give, not just for our employees, but for those who are part of our operation, right? And those mechanisms also exist. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that you should remember as you go into the holidays. It is a great time to share with others, to be with others, to, um, to, um, you know, enjoy your colleagues and even enjoy and very much enjoy being with your colleagues who may be on the vendor side. But at the same time, it's also really important to remember that a different set of rules governs what goes on there versus when you are working with one of your colleagues who is actually somebody that is a state employee. It is just a different set of rules. Um, you all, I think, now, by now, know how to get a hold of Jim uh, Brader. Um, and I do know more and more of you are reaching out to Jim. Um, Jim's great about that. Uh, if anybody has not tried yet, no question is too small. I mean, he's wonderful about answering questions and about trying to help you understand. And, um, you know, you've heard some of his advice over the last few uh, months, but he can help you navigate your way through this so that everything is comfortable for you and it's also comfortable for the person on the other side who may have no bad intention at all that's true and he can help make sure that all the right documentation is in place and that you do not find yourself in a situation where you wind up looking like you did something wrong so i would encourage you if you have any questions as you head with the holiday season send him an email send him a note give him a call He'll respond, and uh, you'll get good practical advice um, that you can feel comfortable following. Our very own ethics lawyer. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, um, I guess the bottom line is uh, think about it before you accept a gift. And if you have any doubts or questions, consult Jim Brady, your ethics officer. That would kind of sum it all up. So 
Thank you. And uh, we did really well today, timing-wise. Okay, good. Thanks so much, everyone.